Now we've all heard of Carroll Shelby. His name is synonymous with automobile racing and high performance vehicles. But when you think the Shelby name, one car model rises above all the rest. The Ford Mustang. Now there were Shelby Mustangs that were iconic in the 1960s and even into the 1970s. Ford even brought the name back in 2005 and it continues to this day with the supercharged GT500 which is the most powerful factory Mustang ever produced. But there was another muscle Mustang that came from this pedigree as well. In this video we're going to talk about the SAAC Mustangs. What? You've never heard of it? It all started in the late 1990s, early 2000s, when members of the Shelby American Auto Club decided to picture what a modern day GT350 might look like. SAAC was, and still is, a group of people that are passionate about Shelby Mustangs. I mean, these are die-hard Shelby owners and enthusiasts that only bleed Ford Blue. The fact of the matter is, that at that time a Shelby Mustang was not a possibility because Carroll Shelby himself did not have any type of relationship with Ford. Now back in those days Carroll Shelby was actually helping out Chrysler but it has been said that Carroll Shelby the man himself did give his blessing to these SAAC Mustangs. And what they produced at that time were cars that were way ahead of production Mustangs using some of the latest performance parts that were available. Now in late 1991, SAAC produced its very first car, the Mark I. It was a Mustang GT hatchback five speed, available only in Wimbledon white. True to the GT350s of the heritage, Guardsman Blue Le Mans stripes made their way from the front bumper to the rear LX spoiler. Fog lamps were deleted in favor of brake ducts that kept the upgraded front five lug brakes cool. The rear brakes were five lug discs as well, and beautiful Simmons wheels were wrapped in Goodyear Gatorbacks at all four corners. The chassis was braced up at the strut towers and at the subframes, and Coney shocks and struts worked with a set of lowering springs. Outside, the familiar Ford Blue Oval was replaced with an SAAC emblem, although some of the earliest models actually said Shelby on them. The cheese grater GT taillights were swapped out for the cleaner LX pieces. The scoops on the side of the Mustang GT were replaced with smoother pieces that gave it a much cleaner look. Think 1993 Cobra, but a few years prior. And the Cobra pieces were actually opposite in their design, and these still said Mustang GT on them. Inside, the Mark I had a full leather interior with special SAAC logos and white and blue stripes. But the engine was where the car really shined. It featured most of the GT40 engine pieces that Ford Motorsport was putting out. It had a GT40 intake and the matching GT40 heads, a 65 millimeter throttle body, ceramic coated short tube headers, underdrive pulleys, and 1.6 roller rockers. Using these parts actually retained the warranty and managed to produce 295 horsepower and 334 foot pounds of torque. Zero to 60 times were in the mid five second range and quarter mile was in the mid to high 13 second range. The Mark I model was only available to SAAC members for a price of starting at $39,995. Now that was a lot of money back then. It was actually about $6,000 more than a hard top Corvette. And more options could actually be checked off including a supercharger. I remember back in the day wanting one so bad that I put SAAC emblems on my white 88 GT. And I actually still have the catalog. I should throw that out. Nah, it's just too cool. In any case, not everybody is an SAAC member. Not everybody was able to order the Mark I. Enter the Mark II. Mechanically, the Mark II was identical to the Mark I, except it was available in different colors. It was also available as a convertible. You could get it black with gold stripes, red with white stripes, and of course, white with blue stripes. The final model produced by the SAAC car company was the Snake. Appearance wise, it resembled the Mark I and the Mark II, but mechanically, it was a stock Mustang GT. It had the same 225 horsepower 5.0 V8 that came on 
pretty much any other 5.0 Mustang. But you were able to option up the car with chassis stiffening or brake upgrades, just like you could on the Mark 1 and Mark 2. Now these cars might not be amazing as far as their capabilities when compared to the modern cars of today. However, in the early 90s, it was quite an achievement to make that level of power and to have a vehicle that could handle that well. These cars are among the best of the Fox body breeds and are extremely collectible if you're actually able to find someone willing to sell one. In my opinion, what's really special about the SAAC Mustangs is that a group of people that were passionate and excited about cars decided to come together and build them and build their dreams, which is pretty much exactly the same thing as Carol Shelby did about 30 years prior. So I hope you learned a lot about the SAAC Mustangs. And if you like this video, do me a favor and hit that like button and uh, drop me a comment. Let me know how I did. And if you want to see more of these types of videos, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button so you get notified about all the latest content here on the channel. Well, I thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.